So I think I'm actually going to start and welcome everyone to um, our the Department of Political Science Open House webinar. Um, and holding webinars is a new experience for all of us, I think. Um, and what we want to do with the time we have is to introduce the program, um, the political science programs that we have at the U of A. I tell you a bit about different parts of the programs and open um, open up the question and answer to you to ask questions. I should introduce myself. I'm Dr. Judy Garber and I'm the associate chair undergrad of the department. Um, and I have with me um, colleagues um, and I will introduce them. Um, Margot uh, Chalborn is a advanced uh, doctoral student and um, experienced instructor in our department. And um, she is going to speak about the really innovative, cool um, experiment we're doing um, with Political Science 101, our um, intro course in the fall. Uh, then we have uh, Dr. Greg Anderson, who is a professor in the department, and he's going to talk about our uh, honors program, which is in fact the biggest honors program in the Faculty of Arts, and there's a reason for that. Then um, Dr. Jared Wesley, who's also a professor in the department, um, will speak to you about career paths in political science, and that's a question that we and other arts departments get asked a lot. Um, and we have, as well, the undergraduate advisor in the Department of Political Science, Ms. Cindy Anderson. Um, and she's the person who, um, unfortunately, this fall, you won't be visiting her office in person, um, but maybe in winter, um, she's the person that you'll be able to email to get advice about uh, political science courses and um, registering and things like that. And she will speak as well. So I'm going to turn over, well, actually, I'm not going to turn over. I'm going to share my screen. <laughs> I forgot that I'm speaking. I'm going to share my screen um, for a very brief PowerPoint presentation because we have um, not much time. So let me, whoops. Okay, let me get back here. I know you're here somewhere. There we go. Um, I'm going to share my screen and hope this works. No, I, oh no, or I'm not going to share my screen. No, no. This is a brand new computer that I opened up 25 minutes ago when my other computer died. So I may not actually be able to do this. Okay, there we go. Um, so let me go to, um, mode of slideshow mode <laughs> okay this is just what you're gonna have to see because this computer is fresh out of the box um I, I want to point out at this historical moment this semester this time this day political science is so important to study and so interesting to study because we are in times of great crisis and change. If we had time, I could have a hundred slides with photos showing evidence of the crisis and change going on in the world. And in fact, um, a lot of our courses, I'm going to try to go to 
slideshow mode. All right. Um, a lot of our courses are actually tailored this year towards um, topics that are related to, um, to crisis and change. Political science is key to understanding ideas that inspire institutions that react to and channel interests that are vested in the existence and outcome, ide ideologies defining beliefs, individuals who are or who, who make or who are themselves crisis and change, agent, agents of crisis and change. And we know that in, um, in the United States, in Canada, across borders, in, um, in Lebanon, in everywhere, um, we, are, we, are in, um, we are in crisis and change mode, wondering what is going to come out on the other end. In political science at the University of Alberta, you can study um, Canadian politics, comparative politics, gender and politics, indigenous politics, international relations, political theory, and public policy studies at the undergraduate level, but also, I'm sorry, at the graduate level, but also at the undergraduate level. We have a whole array of um, fields within political science that um, will spark your interest. You can earn a degree, a Bachelor of Arts in Political Science, so that's a major in political science. A Bachelor of Arts, a Bachelor of Arts Honors in Political Science. And some of you may, for the first time, be entering the U of A, the Faculty of Arts, already admitted to honors because this is the first year of that. If not, you can apply for honors. Um, you can do a minor in political, uh, political science, and you can also do a minor in international studies. If you want a degree with a plus, 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 our department alone has three certificates that you can earn if you're a political science major or minor um, globalization and governance. If you are any student at the university earning a degree, a certificate in peace and post-conflict studies. If you are a student at the U of A earning a degree, you can do a certificate in European studies. And some things that political science students are great at, and I'm, I, I had to take out all the study abroad and the travel abroad, because that'll come back, but I don't know when, and it's sad to talk about it now but the arts work experience program with hundreds of employers um, where you can uh, work for credit. Our pol political science students are the best at running for office or, and managing campaigns um, in, in student governance at all levels. Political science students are the main drivers of our fantastic uh, U of A high school model UN that happens every year and that some of you may have gone to. And our students are really good at winning scholarships and awards for leadership and community service because they're very involved. So what should I do first if I'm interested in studying political science at the University of Alberta? And I will stop sharing my screen if I can figure out how to do this. And I will turn that question over to Margot Chalborn. Good morning, everyone. I'm delighted to see so many attendees. Um, welcome to the department. Thank you, Judy, for that introduction. Um, it's great to see a review of all the strengths of the department. So um, again, my name is Margot, and I am one of four instructors for the course that is Introduction to Politics this fall. So I suggest that if you are interested in the Department of Political Science that you take this course and I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. So I'm working with uh, three of my fellow instructors, Rachel George, Matt Wildcat, and Renee McBeth, 
and we are tremendously excited to be teaching this course. We've spent the majority of the summer um, creating and designing this course specifically for the rare circumstances in which we find ourselves now. So we know that while we may not be together in a physical classroom, we wanted to design a course that is both innovative and highly participatory so that you feel as much as possible like you're in a class with your peers and your instructors and your TAs. So usually 101 is delivered across a few different sections um, with different instructors, each approaching their, their course in a unique way. Um, but this year, Matt, Rachel, and Renee and I decided to combine all of the sections into a bit of a super section um, in a way that 101 has not been done before. So you'll have an opportunity to be part of the first iteration of a course that uses a very skills-driven pedagogy to focus on active learning and responding to the political challenges of our contemporary moment. So while the class is quite large overall, um, one of the very innovative um, features of this course is that students will be divided into about 50 person learning communities. Um, so you will be, despite the, the number of students in the course overall, connected in really small, intimate learning environments with your TAs and with your peers. So with that said, as a little bit of a background, I'll read to you um, our course description to give you a bit more of a flavor of how we are approaching this course and what you might come to expect from it. So amid widespread calls to action and justice for Black, Indigenous, and people of color, and a backdrop of international uncertainty created by COVID-19 and looming economic crises, it is more important than ever for us to investigate the politics of crisis and transformation. Introduction to Politics, Politics and Crisis, will prepare students with the tools to think and respond politically in these uncertain times, while gaining a foundational understanding of the field of politics. The course introduces students to key concepts in political theory, comparative politics, international relations, public policy, and gender and politics, while asking students to be active learners in explorations of power, in questioning ideas and assumptions through critical analysis, thinking in expansive, creative, and wide open ways, and in developing your own unique political voice. So this course is going to use a textbook and it's also going to draw on um, contemporary multimedia, uh, short blogs, newspaper articles, um, a lot of current content to help you understand how some of the theories and concepts that are talked about in um, introductory political science and how they translate into the world around you and into some of the new stories and challenges that you are living in right now. So that's an overview of the course. We really are so excited. We've been working really hard um, and uh, we want to impress upon you that um, we all remember what it was like to be undergraduate students and to be taking large introductory courses and how anonymous one can feel even in the classroom. And so we've worked very diligently to ensure that despite our distance from one another, um, that you're going to feel connected to this material and you're going to be exploring material that feels relevant to the moment that you are in and that you will be connected to your peers and to your instructors and to your TAs so that you don't feel like you're navigating this material alone. So that's the overview of 101. And if you have any questions, you're welcome to get in touch with me or to go to the Department of Political Science website um, and find inf more information there. Thanks, Judy. Unmute myself. Thank you, Margo. That was awesome. And thank you for bringing up crisis and change, which, you know, I already wanted to talk about. I'm going to share my screen again for like one second. Um, and go back into my presentation, um, which that's not doing, and pose the question, what can I do to enhance my studies in political science at the University of Alberta? And for, whoops, oh no, I just gave away the punchline. Um, and, <laughs> and for that, <laughs> Somebody needs to learn how to do this better before she teaches next week. Um, okay, I'll end the show and I'll stop sharing my screen. For that, we go to, well, I'm trying to stop sharing my screen. Um, we go to, there we go. I'm not still sharing my screen, correct? 
we go to uh, Greg Anderson. All right, thank you, Judy. Um, I want to say just a couple things about uh, our honors program. And um, in addition to uh, what Judy said about it being the largest, uh, I would make the case that it's the best in the entire Faculty of Arts, uh, maybe the whole university. Um, and there are a couple of reasons for that. And I'll say just one or two things about the structure, you know, sort of the course structure, but then that spills over into what I think are very, uh, very important benefits uh, professionally, academically in your uh, training as, uh, as students. Uh, structurally, so the honors program, uh, you begin in the second semester of your third year, typically taking political science 399, which is a half semester course. Uh, it's, it's a cohort that you begin, uh, you begin rubbing elbows with people that you're going to become very close with over the next 18 months. Uh, so that one semester, you begin talking about research methods and uh, things in political science. What does it mean to be a political scientist? But you begin the process of starting to work towards the production of an honors thesis, which in your fourth year, you will spend an entire year focused on uh, the production of this uh, honors thesis. You'll work very, very closely with a single supervisor, but still meet with this same cohort that you began uh, meeting with in your third year, so cohort of your peers. Um, and this is where the benefits of, of the honors program, I think, really uh, take hold. Our honors program is probably the closest thing you can get as an undergraduate in terms of experiencing what it's like to be a graduate student. Uh, I strongly encourage all of you to think about postgraduate work of some kind. Many of you may have designs on law school, and I would say probably half of our honors students end up going to law school. It's great training for either law or graduate study because in your fourth year, you actually have to work with a supervisor, one of my colleagues, myself or one of my colleagues, uh, and produce an original piece of research and you spend the balance of that year doing so. That's a lot of what graduate school is like. Uh, it's, it's really about trying to generate an original piece of writing, an original piece of research but the benefits of the program spill beyond what you're doing in terms of the actual production of some kind of uh, written work. Um, there's a rising tide floats all boats quality to our honors program. Because you are working alongside peers, getting one-on-one -on -one instruction with your supervisor inside honors seminar itself, you learn a lot of things about, for example, how to, pl how to apply for grad school, how to apply for law school. It's not about filling out a paper application alone. There's a lot of nuance when it comes to applying for these programs. When to uh, get ready for LSATs or GREs if you're thinking about grad school in the United States. How to fill out these, uh, a statement of purpose uh, in, in applying for grad school. These are all things that you learn just by rubbing elbows with and being around people that are all headed to the same place as you. Uh, and so the salutary benefits of our honors program are at least as important uh, as uh, anything you learn in the classroom along these lines. So the whole thing is really designed uh, to, uh, to get you primed for postgraduate work. Uh, and I, I think there's nothing better in the university uh, in terms of trying to prep you, uh, you know, channel you in that direction than our honors program. Uh, and so I highly recommend it. Uh, just because of all the uh, salutary benefits that come alongside uh, being one of our honor students. And with that, I'll stop. Great, thank you. Um, I'm, I'm just gonna do this one more time. Well, what can I do after I study political science at the University of Alberta? And that is, in fact, my last slide, um, except for our, um, our um, department website. Okay. Dr. Wesley, you have to unmute yourself. Yes, thanks. Uh, thanks, Judy. And um, I'm going to speak to folks a bit about uh, what we can do with political science degrees after we've, after we've graduated. I know uh, there may be some actually some parents on the line here too. So there are uh, plenty of things you can do with a political science degree, but I'd also like to start our discussion with uh, thinking about the types of skills and competencies that you develop uh, 
as you go through uh, various courses in our program. So uh, you can do this research for, for yourself online if you look up what a liberal arts uh, education or what a social science education will get you in terms of the workforce. And in our department though, we, we've actually got a, a few skills and competencies models that we use in, as learning objectives in our various courses. And I think you can lump uh, these into uh, five different categories. The first is um, you learn how to think. You learn how to think in a bunch of different ways from a systems thinking standpoint. You learn how politics, political uh, life is actually a system. And if you alter one part of that system, it results in changes in another part. So thinking about things holistically or systematically is something that we do. You also uh, derive skills in critical thinking, analytical thinking, and problem solving. And I just put a plug in for uh, Margot's 101 course is teaching you uh, that in space. It's a great active learning course in that way. Our students are also well versed in communications of various different kinds. Um, and communication is not just you know, communicating outwardly to other, to other different audiences, be they academic or public and so on, but also learning how to listen to, uh, to our counterparts, particularly in, in seminar courses and in group-based activities that you get in lecture courses. You'll learn to be a great autonomous uh, worker, right? A, a, or an autonomous thinker. Our, our students are known in the workforce for their agility, for their resilience, for their personal responsibility and their initiative. But they also come with skills in project management and learning to uh, think on the fly, as we say, or adapt, uh, adapt ourselves to changing circumstances. Uh, I started off my degree at yeah, right here at the U of A as an honor student in the history program. I found that was interesting because history doesn't seem to move nearly as much as political science and getting into political science courses has really got my adrenaline running and thinking about how things are constantly changing and how we should, should seek to understand um, how and why. Lastly, though, I think our, our, our courses more than any other at the University of Alberta are built around this notion of collaboration and there are few uh, employers and places in the workforce that aren't looking for good team players, people that can build uh, inclusive and collaborative environments and be part of those. Uh, so those are the kind of things that you pick up in our courses in addition to the specific content uh, knowledge that you'll acquire about Canadian politics and comparative gender and politics, political theory and so on. Um, there are a bunch of different career paths that we, we know our alumni from our program have pursued. Um, there are the traditional ones that we think of when we think of political science, you can go into politics, uh, either running for office yourself or being a staffer or getting involved in other parts of um, non-traditional routes in politics, like, like community organizing. We have a lot of students that, that pursue those routes. As Glenn, or sorry, as Greg mentioned, we, um, a lot of our students do pursue law degrees after, after their political science degree. Some go into public affairs, others do research. Uh, a growing number of our students have carved out good career paths in public policy. Many work with Indigenous organizations, both here in Alberta and, and outside the province. Many join the public service at the federal, provincial, and municipal levels, and an increasing number are, are joining uh, nonprofit uh, organizations, again, here in Canada and throughout the world. A lot of our students, too, uh, find success in the business world. Um, we're working on connecting people to different uh, areas here by bringing in, we'll talk about our mentorship programs that we have at the U of A, but a lot of folks don't realize that businesses need consultants, people that do public relations. A lot of our students go in and do marketing because they learn how ideas match with uh, modes of communication uh, to be more persuasive and so on. Um, some of us have gone into teaching either at the high school level or, or, um, or becoming professors. And um, Lastly, uh, there are a lot of other uh, paths that uh, students have taken, but uh, an increasing number also choose journalism. So where do you start in, in terms of uh, carving this career path? Well, uh, there are a number of different internship programs available uh, in the Edmonton area uh, through the Government of Canada. We have a, a, the, the largest concentration of uh, public servants in the government of Canada outside of uh, Ontario and Quebec. And as a result, there's all kinds of different work experiences the students can, can take advantage of. In this chart, I've noted it with uh, little stars or asterisks, uh, those are ones that are available to recent uh, graduates of our program. 
And the ones that have two stars are ones that are available only to graduate students. So I thought I'd throw these in here just so that you get an idea of um, the, you know, the different opportunities that are available to you if you pursue, as, as Greg suggested, uh, post-grad studies. Government of Alberta offers a number of internship programs. I want to plug their student employment registration service, which is a, uh, it's run on a pooled approach. In other words, you put in your resume uh, into a giant resume pool and as positions become vacant, hiring managers within the government of Alberta will go into the pool and pull out resumes rather than posting positions uh, publicly on a website. Uh, so a lot of students don't know that that service exists. It's important to get your resume in there if you're thinking about doing uh, Government of Alberta work. Uh, the City of Edmonton has a number of internship programs uh, and, and post those on their website. There are a bunch of nonprofit internships that we've got listed there. And then if you're interested more in elected, the elected side of politics, legislative internships are available throughout Canada as well. Uh, it, the U of A also provides a, a bunch of support to students in connecting you to these opportunities. So the Arts Work Experience Program, or AWE, is your one-stop shop for trying to secure employment, particularly in the Edmonton region. So if you haven't uh, explored the Arts Work Experience website, please do. And a lot of students are, are a little reticent because we're in the middle of a pandemic uh, and a lot of governments, even before the pandemic, were not exactly in hiring mode. Um, they are for students. There actually are special opportunities that um, special pots of money within a lot of organizations um, that allow them to hire students when they can't hire non-students. So look at, look at the Arts Work Experience website for, for more information. Our University Career Center sets students up with career coaches, mentors, and offers a job shadowing program that I recommend all students take advantage of. The job shadowing uh, weeks happen during reading break, so it's an opportunity for you to this year virtually shadow people in their jobs, which is interesting. Um, and then also uh, when we get back post pandemic, I have an opportunity to go into job sites to see what, uh, to see what you'd like to do. More importantly, honestly, with job shadowing, you learn what you don't want to do uh, in a lot of cases. It's not a job that you, you ended up, it didn't turn out to be the way that you thought it would be. So it's important to take advantage of those opportunities as well. We have a special campus bridge that's available, a uh, website that's available to st current students and alumni that offers a job board where um, local and national and international uh, organizations will post jobs. And they also offer workshops to help improve your, um, your competitiveness in, in, in these uh, employment competitions. Uh, a lot of students are also not aware of the undergraduate research initiative, which is run through the through through the through the University of Alberta. It allows um, you to pursue your own line of research and receive a stipend in some cases. I know it's five thousand dollars for a summer project where you work with a professor over the course of that over the course of that period. They have also awards and a bunch of grants that you might apply for if you, you want to do your own independent research and, and need a little bit of extra funding. And lastly, our Department of Political Science faculty, often when we apply for uh, grants uh, from international and national bodies, we'll put in uh, requests to hire undergraduate research assistants. So if you have a particular professor whose research area you know you're interested in, make sure that you approach them and ask them if they have any research assistant opportunities. So with that, I'll turn the mic and the camera back to you, Judy. That was an awesome presentation, Jared, and I will be wanting those slides informative and attractive. Um, I would like to, we do have a question that I think we want to answer live. Um, and then we do have like 10 minutes for questions, but I do want to allow um, the Department of Political Science undergraduate advisor, Cindy Anderson, to tell you what she can do for you, um, what kinds of questions she can answer and problems she can solve. So Cindy, if you unmute yourself. Good morning, everyone. Um, I, okay, I'm Cindy Anderson. I'm the undergraduate advisor for the Department of Political, Political Science for a long time. Um, Anything that you need in regards to our department, under our undergraduate courses and degrees and 
just registering if you have problems or don't know what to take, call me first or email me first. If I can't help you, then I will know who can. So I would advise everybody to get a hold of me first. My email is on the website um, and I'll be able to help you or else hopefully shorten your search to find someone else. Thank you. And I'm just typing in Cindy's email address, polysci at ualberta.ca for Cindy Anderson. Okay, we have two questions and I'm going to answer both of these live, I think. They're kind of related questions. Um, I think that um, I'll let Jared and Greg will be um, the um, Jared and Greg will be good people to answer. I can help with these as well. How early in our degree can we apply to jobs? Um, and I don't know if that question means the arts work experience. And the question, so let's um, answer that question first. Sure. Uh, it, it's never too, the short answer is it's never too early to apply for jobs. There are some jobs that are restricted, as I said before, to graduates from our program. Um, uh, but there are also a number of opportunities that are only available to students that are actually going to school. So it, I remember thinking about this question usually in my second year. After I get my first year under my belt, I like to focus my all of my attention on making sure I understand how to succeed in university. I wouldn't say go out and look for a part-time or a full-time job unless it's, it's necessary, obviously, for income purposes. Um, but I would say second and second year and, and between second and third year is a good good time to get, get your resumes out there and start looking for jobs in your field. Jobs, internships, and volunteer positions, all of, all of those things. Um, the question, um, are research assistant opportunities paid, um, is an interesting question for undergraduates. Um, they, I'll take a stab at this, they might or they might not be, depending on the, you know, whether the professor has money to pay undergraduates or not. Um, but it is amazing how many, I mean, you can find research assistantships as an undergraduate all across campus in other faculties um, in our um, China uh, Institute and political science students are really highly sought after because they're good researchers, good analyzers, analysts, um, and good communicators. So we have students who work all over campus um, with getting paid to do research um, that they might even get to present at conferences or publish. That would be unlikely in first year. Um, we'd be looking at, you know, second year and beyond for that. Um, but yeah, you would want to look for a research assistantship opportunity that's paid unless you really want the experience of working with a faculty member, which you might. Um, I'm gonna, I don't know what the class package is. <laughs> so we're gonna just skip to Margo for a second. And what are the recommended and extra textbooks for Political Science 101 in the fall? Okay, well, I will show you the textbook right now. I was using it as a prop for my laptop. It's called Introduction to Politics by Gardner, Ferdinand, Lawson, and McDonald. It is available at the U of A bookstore in hard copy. It is also available for- and They will mail it to you. The bookstore is mailing 
hard copy materials. Yeah. Great, thank you, Judy. Um, it is also available if you don't want a hard copy for rent, you can rent it for six months at 55% off. So that may be of interest to you as well. Um, so go to the University of Alberta bookstore website and search PolySci 101 and you'll have that information. Right, yeah. Oh, thank you, 101. Yeah. Um, this is the only textbook that you need to buy for the course. Other materials, when we post them, which may be blogs, newspaper articles, um, short political analyses, those will be available to you on eClass for download or a link that you follow when you watch a TED Talk. So you'll just need to buy one book, but then you will need to pay very close attention to eClass each week to see what additional readings we are posting because there will be some every week. I hope that answers the question. Thanks. Okay, I have to confess that I don't know what the eClass, I would like to answer this question. Will a lot of this information, including contacts for staff, be included in the eClass package? I don't actually know what the eClass package is. However, I can tell you that the Department of Political Science webpage um, will have all the contact information you need. It's, it's constantly being improved and updated, our website, as things change. And um, so you should, through the Department of Political Science website, be able to get answers um, to your questions. Um, but the main political science, um, I need help. Um, email address is polysci at ualberta.ca. I put that into the chat. Um, and I am available as well as undergraduate chair. And my email address I'm typing in is my name, jgarber at ualberta.ca. Okay, I'm going to say that the questions about Political Science 101 um, can be answered. Um, Margo, where do they go for more information about um, Political Science 101? Okay, so for more information about Political Science 101, you can send me an email and I can answer those questions. Um, I can type my email address in the main box in a moment. Um, briefly, oh, thank you, Judy. Um, in terms of when to do the readings, will the lectures be synchronous or asynchronous? Um, we hope that you will have received an email at this point um, from the instructional team talking about the setup of the course. It's a blended course, which means there will be synchronous and asynchronous components. Um, readings for any class, well, I'll say for mine, uh, my assumption is that this is across the board, but certainly for this one, readings are to com be completed before your class begins. Just the same as if you're going to walk into a class on campus, you would have the readings done before your class starts so that you're prepared for the material to discuss it in class. The same goes for our course, even though it's online. Um, there are I saw another question about the textbook, um, not having a hard copy. Um, if I remember the question correctly, then you'll want to rent the textbook and that will be your online copy. Um, you'll still get that rental information through the University of Alberta website. Um, if there are additional questions about 101 specifically, you are welcome to send me an email um, as well. And um, if you have registered for 101, you should also be getting emails from the instructional team giving you more information. Um, and then not to fear, the eClass page will be very robust um, and have all of the information you'll need to be successful. Thanks, Judy. Thank you. Um, I'm going to ask a question. We have only a few minutes here. Um, I'm going to answer the question um, that disappeared about, um, okay, there was a question that disappeared, but I will answer um, Zainab's question about whether there are any courses that you, uh, a political science student needs to take to graduate. And um, 
you can find that on the political science website. Yes, there are um, a specific, there are um, six courses. 101 is a political science 101 is is not a requirement. It's a prerequisite. Um, you need to take six courses, political science courses at the 200 level and four political science courses at the three or 400 levels, uh, at least two of which must be at the 400 level. So our requirements, which are going to get loosened up, thank you for doing that, for pasting that in, Jared. Um, next year, there are going to be some changes and our requirements at the 200 level will allow for more choice um, among courses. But you know what? We have like the simplest requirements um, and tons of choices. And we're going to have a new uh, course, Intro to um, Indigenous Politics, uh, that will be online for next year. Um, so that's, um, that's quite exciting. Um, I would like to um, maybe, I think we have time uh, to answer the question whether there are certain websites to find jobs or internships for political science. Um, the short answer is no, uh, mainly because a lot of these internship programs uh, are launched on a short term basis based on a, an organization's needs. So, there isn't a, an inventory that would, that would stay up to date. My recommendation would be to um, go to the, gov if there's a government you're interested in working with, go to the government website and search internships, but also any nonprofit organizations that you'd be interested in, um, in, in working with. And, and, all, and the Faculty of Arts website and the um, Career Center, um, which is fabulous. The Career Center, the U of A Career Center is not just for when you graduate and you want your forever career. It's for all sorts of opportunities and um, it, they're fabulous. So I would say the Career Center as well. Okay, are there any other questions about the program? Um, excuse me, or anything else we can tell you? Because I think we're at our hard limit of 45 minutes and we're going to um, get cut off. So um, email Cindy, email me, go to our website. We have social media um, sites as well. We have a, a Facebook page. We have a Twitter account, right? Yes. We have a Twitter account. <laughs> yes, we do. U-A-B-P-O-L-S. Um, and I think we're going to have an Instagram account soon. So I thank you all for coming. 60 people is awesome. Do ask questions. Look into Political Science 101 if you hadn't been thinking of taking political science. Um, and follow those career paths. So good, good luck to you. Thank you to all. Good luck to you with orientation and the beginning of what is a strange um, but possibly exciting term for all of us. And I am with this going to end our webinar. Goodbye. Welcome. Bye.